Today's genius recipe is for a souffle, but it's a very unfussy and very delicious souffle, and we have a very special guest. Thank you. <laughs> You can do that to that. Ooh. So that's what we have to put at the garnish, right? It's beautiful. Yeah. I was hoping you would make a garnish. We are here with a man who needs no introduction, but I will do it anyway. Of course, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I, because I have to brag about you. This, this is the great Jacques Pepin. He has written 30 plus best-selling uh -huh. cookbooks and more still to come. Been on many TV shows over the years on PBS. I don't know how many, Probably lots and lots, hundreds. Six, 600, something yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah, he's taught the world how to cook, basically, and we're very lucky to have him here with us. <laughs> but we're not... Thank you, but... <laughs> but today we're not doing something terribly fancy, are we? We're not doing something that you would find at a, at a fancy restaurant. We're doing something very homey and close to you. Yes and no. I mean, a souffle is always suspense, you know, doing mm -hmm. a souffle is always kind of special. But that souffle is special. It's certainly very easy to make. Great. I and will see. So we're making Jacques' mother's souffle. Right. But can you tell us what's different about this souffle from a very classic French technique souffle? This is a cheese souffle, a savory souffle that my mother, she got married, she was 17 years old. Somehow my, my father liked souffle and she never made a souffle. And a friend of her said, oh no, no, it's, it's easy. All you do is a white sauce, a bechamel, you put eggs in it, that's it. Never told her to separate the eggs or anything, so she never separated the eggs as you're going to see. So it's very, very easy. You can do it the day before, it doesn't really matter. And uh, one time she came to my house, uh, probably 50 some years ago, I've been married 53 years, so, and she said, oh, I'm gonna do a souffle for dessert. So she does a uh, white sauce, she put eggs in it. I said, mom, it's not going to work. She said, mm, don't worry about it, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and that's it, so this is her souffle. I name it after her in several of of my book, you can do variation with it. I've done it with spinach underneath, or um, or a Swiss chard, a different type of cheese, of course. And I like it to do it in a in a gratin dish type rather than the souffle. Even the other souffle, I like this way because you get more of the top for each portion rather than a narrow one where you get the top but after it kind of collapses on itself. Mm -hmm. It's a question of taste, you know. Do you think the top is the best part then? For your personal taste? Probably, yeah. yeah. <laughs> On the other side. Okay. Yeah, should we get started? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I have uh, six tablespoons of butter, right? Okay, yes. Okay. Are you throwing the rose in too? Yeah, the rose is part of the, the, <laughs> the butter. You know, you do that with a knife, scraping the knife on top of it. Actually, that gives you the quality of the butter too. When you have a butter with a lot of liquid in mm -hmm. it, it kind of breaks. You know, so a high quality butter would kind of be elastic like this. You can do that with chocolate as well. Uh, I have flour here. Uh, how much flour do I have in there? Six tablespoons, Six is tablespoons. that right? Six tablespoons. Yeah, the same thing than the butter. Usually okay. that's what it is on a, on a bechamel. So you do the first part, which is the roux if you want. And uh, so you put flour. So of course, if you were in New Orleans, you probably cook that for 15, 20 minutes to do a dark roux and all that, but this is a light roux. Mm -hmm. And conventionally, when you do a roux like that, you put liquid in it. If you put it cold like this, then it will dilute very well. Mm -hmm. Hot, you have to be a little more careful, but basically, you pour the whole thing in it, you bring it to a boil and basically cook it for one minute and it's done. That's a white sauce or a bechamel, you know. If you do that with the chicken stock, then you have a chicken velouté mm -hmm. instead of liquid. If you do that with water, you have a bastard sauce, we call it in France. <laughs> Uh, if you do it with, you know, different type of stock, different type of name, then in addition to that, in your bechamel, you can add all kind of things and it take another name. This is the beauty of classic French cooking. So salt, pepper in it, fair amount of black pepper. You do this. What you have to do here, as it comes to a bowl, it will thicken. Make sure that with your hand, you hold the, the, the with this one, you go around here in the corner. And again, this is a good pan. 
It's a sauteuse like because it's roundish like this. But when you have a straight angle like this, then it's very important to really go in the corner like mm. this. That's where it stick first, you know. So we bring that to a boil. We're gonna put uh, the eggs in it, so you wanna break the sure. egg? Sure, yes, there? I can do that. Okay. And you like to crack eggs on a flat surface, right? On the right? platform, yes. Okay. Because if you do it on something uh, very sharp like this, it's likely that it push uh, the, 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 the shell into the, the mm -hmm. thing, often crack the yolk and also introduce bacteria. Mm -hmm. So you do it flat and open it, yes. Small detail, but <laughs> you see it's thickening now. So this basic white sauce, this bechamel, what else could you do with it? Where else would you see that in cooking? Oh my like God, you place. can do hundreds of things. Any type of sauce will be an extension of this. And of course, this is a pretty thick sauce, too thick to make a sauce, so you would have to dilute it. Mm -hmm. When I was working in Paris, we would do that, I'd all the velouté, the thing, well done. And when we use some bechamel, you took some pre-cooked bechamel to reheat it and so mm -hmm. forth. But, so we want to beat With, that. Yes. Of course, conventionally here, on a souffle, you will separate the yolk, and you will add the yolk to this, and that thicken it a little more whether it's a dessert too. And then you beat the egg white until a pick will you know, firm. And then, that's it. You mix your egg white in the souffle at the last step, and you have to be careful. You cannot really do that much more than an hour, 45 minutes ahead. Mm -hmm. That souffle, you can do it a week ahead, wow. a year ahead, five years, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here, this is, of course, hot. This is cold, so I would be a bit careful to put a little bit in there, so I don't want to cook my egg. If you have time at home, you let it cool off a little bit. Probably better. But as long as you're moving fast, it doesn't seem to be Well, a problem, if you put right? a little bit at the time, mm -hmm. that's it. And basically, my souffle is done here. And do we add the cheese in yeah. here? Okay, yeah. great. So here, I have two cups, I think, of uh, Swiss cheese but you could do it with another type of cheese. Is there anything good to know about the type of cheese? Should it be another melty type of cheese? Well, in, in France, certainly when I was a kid, we didn't use much Parmesan cheese, mm -hmm. both much olive oil also, mm -hmm. uh, where I come from in Lyon, you know, more in the south. So that makes sure, as I said, you can do it in individual souffle mold or in a big one, like this one is. You know, oh. Could you do it in like a cast iron skillet? Uh, in, a, in a skillet? In a cast iron skillet? Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> any, any, any container is going to work, yeah. Sometimes I put herb in it, sometimes I forget it. <laughs> I have so much shives in the, in the garden, mm -hmm. in my garden, it's oh. amazing. I ah. use shives in everything I have, in soup, in salad, in vegetable. Okay, so here we have a uh, five cup container, you know. Butter it, of course, so it slides nicely. You can put a little bit of Parmesan cheese around if you want, you know. And what will that do? Or, or, or some product to give a nice crust on the mm -hmm. outside. You know? yeah, it will stick to it. Okay, so the souffle, you know. Okay. So you need to put it on a, preferably on a cookie sheet in the mm -hmm. oven because uh, in order to get it in and out, it's much easier. We can decorate Ooh. the top a little bit, maybe. With a little bit of cheese on top. So this is the point where if you wanted to let it sit, you could leave it out yeah, at yeah. room temperature for a few hours. You could yeah, put yeah. it in the fridge for a while. Yeah, you, could even, you could even not put it in, in your container here. You, you could even uh, leave it in, uh, in your bowl mm. here and mold mm. it. Man. So maybe I put a bit of uh, cheese here. Why not? Huh? You agree with it? I agree. Okay, I think good. this looks beautiful. Good. Okay. Thank you. Thank there we you. are. What about 375 degrees, 35, 40 minutes, something like that. Okay. That's it, and Thank during you. that time you can drink a bottle of wine.
My grandmother used to make this a lot, and you can have it cold, you can have it warm, oh, right. you can have it the next day, and it's really a wonderful and versatile dish. I have even been known to, you might want to plug your ears, sub out some of the cheese and add um, either zucchini or cauliflower. You just have to make sure whatever cooked vegetable you add is really dry. I know, I will never do that for you, don't worry. What, uh, mm. what other recipe you remember from your grandmother? I remember or everything. Or from your father. No, no, I remember <laughs> I remember everything. She used to go to the market and she would get fresh pigeon and we would have that, like that was a really big deal, family meal. And um, peas with lettuce and onions, petit pois à la française. Petit pois à la française. Like that's a really classic kind of thing and you mix in some, and cook some lettuce in there too. I think what you, it's really what, what classic. you may remember the most, and your mother loved it too, is soup au vermicelle. Just oh, soup yeah. au vermicelle, which is just chicken stock with uh, uh, capelli, you know, little vermicelli. Vermicelli noodles. And, uh, that's it, that's and, it. And that's yeah. it. And maybe a bit of grilled cheese on top. Mm. We're, gonna, we're, gonna, <laughs> we're gonna drink to your grandmother. <laughs> Always. Yes. Drink to your grandmother. And I think oh, that... It's been five uh, minutes? Oh, should we check on the souffle? I, I, I oh, think good. that I, I smell that it's cooked. Can you, you bring smell? it? Yes. yes. Look at that. Look at wow. that. See? Wow. Look at that souffle. So. Okay. So if you make this beautiful? enough, you'll be able to smell when it's cooked too. Yeah, I will yeah, say yeah, that yeah. when you used to work for the French president, Papa, you used to make like a bunch of different souffles so that there was yeah. always one ready for him, right? Yeah. Really? <laughs> here that we cut in the corner here. You see, you, you see how that's beautiful the it best, is? Wow. That's the best one. What do you think are the keys to getting that much fluffiness? Getting well. The eggs well? No, it's because you beat the eggs the right way. Yeah. That's you. Uh -huh. That was you. <laughs> <laughs> and you see you have a nice crust on the outside mm -hmm. also. Look at the, the crust on the outside. Yeah, that's, that's, that's yeah. the that part parmesan? that everybody wants. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> mm. <laughs> that's <a> hot. <laughs> well, how many times do you think you've made this recipe on TV? It's the, the first time that I do it. Really? Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. all right. No, I, was, I probably forgot. <laughs> And then um, I heard you recently got a, a Lifetime Achievement Award from the Daytime Emmys, is that correct? Yes, I did. So there was two people that night, Judge Judy and me, <laughs> who got the <laughs> Lifetime Achievement Award. Achievement Award. That was fun. Can't take it too seriously though. And to the, <laughs> did you and Judge Judy go out for a glass of wine afterward to celebrate? Yeah. Yes? Champagne and the wine, yeah. All right. If you want to see more genius recipes like this, for one thing, you can find Jacques' books everywhere books are sold, all 30 plus of them, including oh, one more coming out next year. Yes. And check out the Jacques Pepin Foundation's website as well. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. I'm doing to that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Happy cooking.